All right, so today we're going to begin our tutorial is about how to draw a Walking Dead zombie. I love zombies. I'm a big fan of zombie films. Um, my favorite new zombie series is the Walking Dead series, and I'm actually working for them right now, doing different product designs for them. So this is, you know, pretty much what I'm doing already. So the first thing we do is we have our brush set up as a just simple sh shape dynamics. We're going to do a little drawing here. And uh, we're setting up the shape. So it's like this. We're leaving the opacity off. This is all I want. And now, ooh, this is a horrible color. This isn't zombie color yet. All right, it's time to just do a little drawing. So what I want to do is I want to reference some zombie pictures. So this is what I have pulled up. And yeah, these are some really good pictures of zombies. You know, this one in particular looks pretty good. I love that look on it. And, you know, we're going to use this as reference point. Now, what I want to do is I want to make like a comic book zombie first. And if we have enough time, we'll do some other stuff with it. So, like anything, when you're sketching on a Wacom tablet, you can't get really accurate, which is fine. You know, this is CS5, so this is, I mean, this is how messy I am. This is my zombie, people. It's just more about drawing and being able to correct mistakes. Like right here, I can already sort of see a, a vein popping out for its artery right here, shifting into the ear, hitting a skull, uh, a skull cap right here. And then from here, a little trapezius popping out. I recommend you guys get some books by Bridgman. They're very good for human anatomy. All right, so I'm just throwing in some googly stuff. And then we'll take a look at that zombie again. Ooh, he has a mess of hair. I call this shitty drawing that turns into good drawing. Hopefully this will turn into good drawing. But so far, shitty, 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 shitty drawing. And I'll throw in some hair. You know, I'm not sure what you would call this method. Scribbling method or animation style method. And then let's place some eyes. This is more about planning and figuring out what you want out of a drawing more than anything. So maybe I want a capsized nose popped out. Already, I want his jaw to look a little bit longer. So maybe around here. You know, I, there's this tassel of hair, whatever's left there. Maybe some rivets here. All right, so this is version one. Now what we're gonna do is take this, lower the opacity about 28%, throw in a new layer, throw in uh, some white again. But behind this, take this. Now we're gonna refine it a little bit more. I'm gonna shift this a little bit more. Okay. This is gonna be my copy over. And from this, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna drag this thing in. I want some reference point. Yeah, that is some gnarly looking face. It's like my friend. Andrew from when I was a kid had uh, leprosy. No, I'm just kidding. But you know, I use what you got in your life to connect. Okay, so let's start with the eyes. I love eyes. Let's rotate, and there we go. What I just did was press R for rotate. That allows you to rotate the tools and push it. Push the canvas around so you can get the correct stroke that you want. And then, uh, since I know anatomy pretty decently, this will be the skull area. This will be the, the, I'm not really sure what you call it. I'm not very good with anatomy names personally, but this is the nose bridge right here. And then this is the, the breathing hole that now escapes and has nothing to hold on to because his body has been decaying flesh for a while.
Uh, now we're gonna throw some eyes on it. If I want to go between different screens in Photoshop, I use Control Tab. That allows me to cycle through. A great tip. I'd say one of the best tips I learned when I was working in the game industry because I'd be working on several pieces at once, and I just wanted to just scroll through all my drawings. Always have some good reference. It makes your life a lot easier. And I'll make the brush a little bigger. I want to really work with this. Yeah. Let's fill his eyes. Zombies are fun. If you like drawing people, zombies is like the next funnest thing to draw. So it's like most people who I know are good at drawing humans are really good with anatomy anyway so this is like the next step it's just oh why don't I not draw all the flesh and beautiful skin underneath why don't I just draw what I actually am studying which is a bunch of flesh decaying badassness all underneath so I'm going to throw some tossly hair I don't know if I got chicked a little bit, but that's okay. The good thing about zombies is there's not really that many ways you can mess up. I mean, it is a decaying human flesh. So we're going to throw in a little chin there. Ooh, some mottled skin. Maybe some bone. Yeah. yeah, it's looking more like a girl. I'll have to make it a little bit more like a guy real soon. Throw in some hair. Looks like a hippie bum gone zombie. God, I hate that. Beat this three. This thing out in the streets. Throw in some hair, and now we're gonna throw in a little bit of his neckline. So, whatever the ear is, I know it hits with the collarbone right here. So this is something that always has to be here. These are like the fundamentals of human drawing. From there goes the other one. So there we go, we got a little scary zombie. Now let's work on this flesh decay and some of this anatomy. It's gonna look like uh, Tom Cruise on the 4th of July in the zombie fight. It's actually a pretty zombie because I mean it's his hair. Most zombies don't have any hair at all. Okay, throw on some stuff, some mess. Let's see how he looks with some scary eyes. Yeah. Yeah, he's just like, his eyes are ebbing. He's just completely a dead person right now. Edged in. Throw in some value. You know, since we still got time, let's throw in some value. I don't get to throw in value anyways in my work. So let's take this. Let's get rid of some of the background sketch lines. Do I need that? Hmm. You know what, I'll leave some of them my background sketch lines. I sort of actually like them a little bit. They add a lot of, uh, I guess, texture to my drawing. Well, I'm going to push it back a bit more. Like that. Okay. And now I'm going to make another layer. And this one's just going to be value layer. So it's going to be set to multiply. 
and I'm just going to throw a big, nice value over it. Uh, maybe darker. Yeah, this is it. From there, I'm going to throw in some more value. Get rid of all the dark under areas. Anywhere that could be flat or really black. Uh, let's get rid of his hair, darken it up. And then it has a shadow here underneath. And then I'm going to throw in some of this highlight area. I'm trying to find areas that have just a little light showing. And then I'm going to quickly throw in, it's just too bright in the back, so I'm going to throw in this. Big nice gray scale. That's not it. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Reverse it. That's a hundred. Yeah, that's a little scarier. All right, starting to look a lot scarier now. Let's pump out its eyes again by just erasing through this layer right here, my original multiply layer. Now, is that getting a little bit more scary? I think it is. Now let's pump up the values a little bit more. Let's, you know, let's just take this whole thing, merge it. Let's pump up the values. I'm going to take uh, my brush and I'm going to squash it and give it a more painterly brush type feel. The flat brush. Now, this is where changing it, the, the transfer the opacity to pen pressure might actually be useful. Because we're done with the drawing phase, and this is more about carving what we want phase. So I'm thinking the light hits a lot right here. It'll never ever compete with these dark eyes, though. These are just really important. Let's do that. Let's look at our reference again. It's a little bit different, but it gives you me ideas to work with. You know, like I like these squatted teeth things going on. That's how I'm going a little crazier like that. Maybe a junction of his skin is just tearing off right here. Maybe a little bit too. Right there. Maybe the blackness of his eyes just keep on dripping down. His blood and grime coming down its eyes. Sorry I'm so graphic but I love Halloween so. This like popped up in front of my face. I'd scream but then I'd giggle because I'm so happy this is Halloween. You know. That's just how I am. I love monsters. Just something really awesome about them. They're out of this world. They're gnarly. It's hot, hot, hot. Santa Barbara girls every year. 